Hey everyone, happy week, happy new week, happy whatever, you know, the whole thing. Um, I gotta tell ya, thanks for tuning in. Um, so listen, I'm gonna start with a quote. So Maya, Maya Angelou, uh, poet, probably should know her, um, said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better do better. Um, I was thinking that that kind of shapes up a little bit of, of virtue ethics, that sort of thing. Do what you can with what you can, how you know, what you know, where you know. Um, and then when you can do better, do better. When you know more, do better. And I think that there is a modicum we're seeing of this push of a lack of intelligentsia, um, a lack of uh, critical thought under the guise of common sense or critical thought. Um, trust me, I'm all for I'm all for thinking stuff. I'm also all for not overthinking stuff. I think that that can be a trap, but uh, there is a level of thought applied. I was telling someone uh, before I think the scariest thing anyone should face, uh, particularly if you're you're somebody that practices the Christian faith, the scariest thing someone ought to be the most scared of, and this is coming from somebody that that has his views on hell and eternity and stuff, but um, nevertheless, I think the scariest thing is approaching Jesus and, uh, and saying, Lord, Lord, that whole verse, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, and I will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And if you're like, but if, if you are under the beliefs that that is who that is, then uh, it's not really like it seems kind of silly to be like I never knew you like I don't know who you are because it's like I'm a divine but I never really had a intimate yada that's what they called it in Hebrew um yada never had that uh, bit of knowledge of you so I think uh as a great metaphor when it comes to that um that should be scary, especially if, because if someone's going around, some bloke is going around saying, I'm the truth. That means anywhere there's truth, that's, there's that person. It's kind of trippy and weird. But so if truth says to you, and this is kind of that thing, truth, light, like we were talking about, um, the closer you get to light, the bigger shadow you cast. The kind of the important thing is, uh, what do you think the light focuses on your shadow or you? So what should you focus on? But if you're thinking, Hey, um, that should be the scariest thing just from a philosophical standpoint, strip all of the, the Christianese and that jargon away. Scariest thing should be you doing things in the name of truth and having the personification of truth come down and say, I never knew you. We never related. Um, that should scare you. So common sense Sure, but uh, ignorance isn't bliss, it's just ignorance. So, like I said, that Maya Angelou quote once again, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. This is going to go into when we talk a little later today about Plato's allegory of the cave. And you might be like, what the hell... Uh, why would we be talking about the allegory of the cave when we're talking feminist ethics? Well, I'll tell you. Because coming out of a cave is very much a metaphor for, uh, you know, being birthed into new knowledge. So, you know, with that, feminism. All right. Um, so we're going to talk feminism today. Uh, and yes, that was, I get to see the replay. Um, yes, with feminism, it's one of those things. Uh, if you've watched the videos in prep, then you know, um, which one of those 
are, in fact, feminism. Are we talking specifically, are we talking, uh, welcome back, Natalia, um, are we talking specifically that sense of just man-hating, uh, slay the patriarchy type of thing? Is it something where uh, it's just hijacking these masculine things and uh, pushing that uh, through to a feminist thing? Is it something where, like, I literally, I googled uh, Hulk smash and um, then put just Hulk smash the patriarchy and there's a whole thing. There's a whole thing. All you gotta do is google Hulk smash the patriarchy and it makes Hulk that much more of a hero. Um, but is that what we're talking about? Just man-hating um, and needing to explain what tampons are and how they work and what menstruation is. Is it all about a menstruation orientation? Um, is it all that? Is it replacing that idea of being like, oh yeah, oh man, we're so tough. Like, oh, with like, no vaginas are so tough. Like, oh, ooh. Um, that sort of thing. Or is it something uh, that that is in fact more than that. Well, if you looked at the Brene Brown video, um, what we were looking at is, uh, is the sense of, um, what caring actually is, right? It kind of goes back to our video. There's two stories, those that teach you empathy and those that teach you fear. And I think some of you were discussing this too in the discussion board. It made me think of a quote where two characters were discussing with each other about just being afraid. And one says to the other, funny thing, fear, isn't it? Once fear rules you, you're even afraid to admit what's scaring you. And so going back to that initial, there are two types of stories those that teach us empathy and those that teach us fear. And fear is valuable when it's necessary, but is it necessary all the time? And would you rather be motivated by more than just fear? Um, so as we're approaching this, that's kind of what we're talking about. So empathy, what is empathy? Well, empathy is a choice. And what Brene Brown said in that initial video Empathy is a vulnerable choice, right? It's a choice to open yourself up to something that you might not otherwise do. And this is where we start to get really philosophical because I think that, that um, we get so brain-oriented, right? Um, how we connect with people. And this is, this will carry over as we discuss in two weeks, discuss uh, section 6.0 and that introduction to, to political philosophy at all. What we need to recognize is um, I think there's a very real blinders that end up happening. I kind of saw it in the discussion board a little bit. Um, it's something where, totally fine talking about stuff like oh there's all this stuff and philosophical thought but uh as Brene Brown said empathy drives connection and sympathy fuels disconnection and what we're looking for philosophically is something of again that perspective understanding and how can you anticipate doing that if you don't open yourself up to that connection. And this is where we also get into, if we're looking at changing people, this is before we're even getting into feminism, why is it important to look into this stuff? Well, because what we're looking into is a better understanding of knowledge. Um, Philo Sophia, Sophia in the Greek, um, oh man, uh, it it's eludes me for the Hebrew, but they're all a feminine pronoun. If the love and pursuit of wisdom itself is the love and pursuit of something feminine. Um, 
and we've got to deconstruct what that means and what that looks like. But the bigger thing here is this is the challenge is pushing yourself past and into that vulnerable place and that vulnerable space because it means connecting with something. Some of you might genuinely have shared experiences like Will did in Goodwill Hunting. If you never saw Goodwill Hunting, check it out. Um, some of you, like Sean, Sean did, right? He says, you mean personally? Yeah, I have. They connected. But just because you don't share experiences or have similar experiences does not mean you can't connect. What it means is putting yourself in a vulnerable position. It means getting out of your head, really, but taking your head to get out of your head. Here's the truth about stuff. It's still pinned. He just, he loves it. He loves it. It's still pinned as his go-to tweet. If you go to Ben Shapiro's Twitter, facts don't care about your feelings. Okay, except when that's used against people when their facts disagree with them. If I just am like, hey, 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 there's more intersex people on the planet than there are people who nationally identify with Judaism. Weird, because intersex is something that uh, really shuts down that whole binary thing we have. Um, and I'm like, this kind of goes this way. Guess what, old Benny boy? Facts don't care about your feelings. Here's the facts, right? Philosophically, if we're after true justified belief, we're after beliefs that are true, but that can be uncomfortable, that can cause discomfort. So truth is not always something that's comfortable, but this is where your facts don't care about feelings. It's really your feelings that don't care about facts. And if you really want to connect with someone, you connect through feelings, not facts. Facts in truth don't change people's minds. And this is why studying feminism and feminist ethics is super important. Because if we were honest with ourselves, if we took down our blinders and took down our little things, facts are not what convince people. If someone on the internet, just try it, anyone on the internet, here's my facts. They'll be like, well, I don't trust that. That's from the failing New York Times. Okay, cool. Right? Here's another study. Well, I don't trust that. Okay. Well, here's all the facts. Well, they're not facts. All right, cool. But the thing that we're looking at is something like, okay, somebody brings about like a, right, we, we, we use this a lot, our facts and data. Well, if we have this support, then it's proof. All right, use it as proof and try to convince someone. Somebody, somebody, you're, you're in an argument with somebody over, over something, systemic racism, hypothetically. And you, you, they show you a paper from like, um, it is a thing. Watch the videos I posted for the content prior to this. Then you would under there's a, there's a whole video on menstruation orientation. Um, just check it out. I included it. It is a thing because I like teaching men. Um, but here's the deal. You show someone, oh, here's this. And they get into an argument and they go, um, hey, uh, here's a peer-reviewed study from 2007. It's 22 pages. Um, it's got uh, three peer review. Um, and this is the study, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, see, so it doesn't exist. S systemic racism doesn't exist. And you're like, wow, that's a pretty good paper. Interestingly enough, in 2019, here's this most recent one, and they've actually taken this this one that you showed me into account. Here's a 27-page peer-reviewed paper with three dozen peers to review it. Uh, are they going to look and be like, whoa, this has uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Your opinion and one proving it grabs the one. Here's 100. Exactly. It's that here's this thing. Um, are they genuinely going to be like, wow, your peer review paper is, is more peer reviewed. It's more recent and it has more papers or more pages to it. Uh, it's clearly more thorough than mine. I've got to reassess my life values. Thank you for bringing these facts to my attention because, um, I need to change based on the facts that have come out. No, they don't. The truth is, no, they don't. They, they pull the whole, well, I'm entitled to my opinion thing, or they just try to, you know, dox you or do something, right? Um, that's the point that we're looking at here, is we're looking at a connective tissue. So some of you might have connected to will, and seeing that was something that's like, oof, that, uh, that's heavy and I relate, whether abuse or something, right? If you haven't, it becomes, right? Something challenging or, or challenges you. The question philosophically is how quick do you put up those defenses that just like keep you disconnected? keep you from not truly opening yourself up to that vulnerable position, right? Where it still is, it's the sympathy card that Brene Brown in the video was talking about. It's the deer that's like, Ooh, this is bad. Mm, yeah, but no, right? Nah. Where you can be like, wow, he had such a horrible childhood. Whoa, like literally was told pick which tool to beat him with like oh man yeah but you know he's still he's still got to pull himself up by his bootstraps and it's the it's the how easy is that how easy for someone is that right you are closing off that connection of saying in that empathetic moment, you don't have to share experiences. You just have to process to that vulnerable place for you. Wow, that's quite a start to that afternoon special. For access to the full video or to get the full course or just support me making new content that has everything or nothing to do with what you just watched, head on over to my Patreon, link in the bio, join the community. I'd love to see you there and have you become a part of something bigger than me, but something where I can play my part just the same. See you there.